Before we get into cis-trans or easy conformation determination, let's first discuss the nomenclature, the similarities, and the differences. So cis is the same thing as Z conformation. Trans is the same thing as E conformation. However, cis-trans nomenclature is used when we have two of the same substituents on the double bonded carbons or ring structure. And easy conformation is used when we have four different substituents on the double bonded carbons or ring structures. So once again, cis is the same as Z, trans is the same as E, but if we have two of the same substituents, we use cis-trans nomenclature. If we have four different substituents, we use EZ nomenclature. So here's an example of a geometric isomer, double bonded carbons, each with two substituents on it. First thing I'm going to notice is that there are two of the same substituents. There's two methyl groups, one on each of the carbons. So we're going to be using cis-trans nomenclature. So now, how do we determine whether it's cis or trans? Well, start by looking at the left carbon and determine priority among its two substituents. So I notice a hydroxide group and a methyl group. The oxygen has a greater atomic number than the carbon, therefore we'll have a greater electron cloud around it, which gives it priority. So then I look at the second double bonded carbon and determine the priority among its substituents. And bromine has a greater atomic number than the carbon down here, which means it'll have a greater electron cloud density, giving it the priority. So now, in the plane of the double bond, I notice that the two priority substituents are on opposite sides of the double bond, which makes this geometric isomer a trans geometric isomer. So here's another example of a geometric isomer with double bonded carbons. It's similar to the one before, however, I have four different substituents, which means we're going to be using EZ conformation nomenclature. So just like before, I'm going to look at the left side carbon and determine priority among its substituents. And once again, we have an oxygen compared to a carbon up here, and the oxygen has a greater atomic number, therefore it'll have a greater electron cloud density, so it will be priority. And then I look at the right side carbon of the double bonded carbons and determine priority among its substituents. Bromine has a greater atomic number, therefore greater electron cloud than fluorine, so bromine will get priority on the right side. And then once again, I look across the plane of the double bond and I see the two substituents are across the double bond from each other, which means this is E conformation. And again, we use E instead of trans because it has four different substituents. So let's try another example. So I'm going to do it just like I did before. I do notice that I have two of the same substituents. And when you see these two substituents, just know that they are methyl groups and they're shown with one single bond. So I'll start with the left side carbon and determine priority among these two substituents. I have a methyl group here, which is definitely greater in atomic number, therefore greater in electron cloud. So this will get the priority on the left side. Then I look at the right side carbon, and I notice this is an ethyl group compared to a methyl group, which definitely has a greater atomic number, therefore greater electron cloud. And now in the plane of the double bond, I notice that the two priority groups are on the same side, and because I had two of the same substituents, I will use cis nomenclature. So this is a cis geometric isomer. Simple as that. So here's an example of a geometric isomer that is a ring structure. And I have an hydroxide on a wedge here and a nitrile on a wedge on this side. Well, you may already see that because they're both wedged, they're both coming out of the page, they would be in the same plane as each other, maybe considering it to be cis or z. But we do have to remember that wherever there's a wedge, there is a dash. So I'm going to dash out the hydrogens, which are hardly ever shown in organic compounds. And I'll have to dash out a hydrogen here as well. But we're going to do it just the same way as we did the previous examples. I'll look at the left side carbon. 
and determine priority among these two substituents. Well, it looks like the nitrile is definitely going to have a bigger electron cloud. And then when I look at the right carbon, I see that hydroxide will definitely have a bigger electron cloud than the hydrogens. So both of these are priority. And we notice that they will be on the same side because they're both coming out of the page on a wedge. So therefore, because we have two of the same substituents, we will not use easy conformation. We'll use cis-trans conformation nomenclature. And this is a cis molecule because the two priority substituents are in the same plane as each other, both on a wedge. Easy as that. So here's an example similar to the one before. However, this time I put the hydroxide on a dash, I have the nitrile still on a wedge, and I also have a methyl group attached to the left side carbon. So we have four different substituents because wherever there's a dash, there's a wedge. So I'm going to go ahead and put the hydrogen right here that's hardly ever shown. And I have four different substituents, so we're going to use easy conformation nomenclature. So I'll start with the left carbon and determine priority among its two substituents. So I have a nitrile and I have a methyl group, and the nitrile definitely has a greater atomic mass, therefore a greater electron cloud, so it will get priority on the left side. On the right side, I have a hydroxide group and a hydrogen, and of course the hydroxide group is greater priority than the hydrogen, so we'll circle that one. So now notice that the priority on the left side is on a wedge, which means coming out of the page. The priority on the right side is on a dash, which means going into the page. So in the plane of the ring itself, which is like the page, they are on opposite sides of the ring which means because we have four different substituents and they're on opposite sides, we will use E nomenclature. So this is an E isomer. How about this example? We have another double bonded carbon and we have four, mm, actually we do not have four different substituents. Notice here we have two methyl groups attached to one carbon which means this is not a cis-trans nor easy isomer. Be careful. Oh, and one last thing. E or trans geometric isomers are more energetically favored, meaning they are more stable because the two priorities, which have huge electron clouds, are as far away from each other as possible being on opposite sides of the double bond plane which makes them less repulsive of each other, which means there would be less energy in the molecule, therefore more stable. So E and trans are more favored or stable molecules. Simple as that.